Hey everyone, you have reached the landing. One Planet's weekly meeting place for the entire Polygon NFT community. Every week at this time, you will learn more about the Polygon network, its native token Matic, and discuss the wonderful world of NFTs with some of the best and brightest minds from the NFT universe. And now, here's your host. Here's your host. get started here everybody i'm definitely excited about today i, I love the topic that we're going to be talking about cypher wars has a really cool project coming out in the next few days so we'll dive a little bit into what they're making as well but just to get us uh, a few more listeners if you can just drop a comment down at the bottom right there's a button just tell us what trading card games you've played you've enjoyed Growing up, I played a lot of Pokemon. I used to go to the Toys R Us tournaments. I played Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, I, I will admit that like recently I have not been playing many card games. But uh, one that I did try was uh, Department 77 is making their, their own trading card game uh, w- within their ecosystem. Of, uh, of their game so so that's been fun to explore and we'll dive deeper into cypher Wars and and hear about their trading card game too but yeah drop some comments like the uh the space retweet it if you can let's see if we can get some more people in here hi guys it's eileen here on the account um my trading uh cards obsession uh was hearthstone actually I was obsessed with that for the longest time. Um, but then once you stop playing it for a little while and you lose traction, uh, it becomes very hard to pick it back up again. So I was never really able to go back and play with um, any level of effectiveness that I, uh, I used to back in the day. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. You know, Hearthstone, I did try that one out as well. I know I when I heard about it, uh, there was a lot of hype going on with the game and there was some live streaming events going on. So it, it's interesting, right, how the the games can e- expand all the way to having content creators just focused on the game. And and so that that's something that I'm looking forward to seeing grow within Web3, right? That combination of nfts and streaming and and cards and so i you know i i hope that we can see some of that within the cypher wars ecosystem as well just to see which players come in and really try to build their own kind of brand within the ecosystem yeah absolutely you know there is um you know so much potential there with cypher wars because obviously um Excuse me, I have a lolly in my mouth. Um, obviously, um, you know, there are more chapters coming, so this isn't the only chapter in the story. And you could do spin-offs um, and, you know, AI art like I did the other day. Um, and you could, uh, you know, you, we can do events with literally any other gaming platform. Um, and, you know, uh, gamble on the outcome of their games and... It's just so much potential there, it's nuts. Yeah, so uh, Arlene, we'll we'll dive deeper for sure into the Cypher Wars lore and everything that's going on there. What I want to do right now, though, is is get our landing music going on. And uh, Matic Man, do you want to let us hear that? Hey everyone, you have reached the landing. One Planet's weekly meeting place for the entire Polygon NFT community. Every week at this time, you will learn more about the Polygon Network, its native token Matic, and discuss the wonderful world of NFTs with some of the best and brightest minds from the NFT universe. And now, here's your host. Here's your host. Here's your host. One Planet's the place to be. The show is your best. Blockchain is 
All right, all right. Thank you for that, uh, Matic man. I want to go around the room here and just catch up a little bit, see how you guys are doing today. Matic man, what's going on with you today? Hey, Edwin, man, I'm doing well. B-Dub's been messaging me. He's trying to get connected, so hopefully he'll be with us any moment now. So, man, I'm really, I'm always excited to be in these spaces on a weekly basis, of course, on uh, Wednesday night here at the landing. Of course, I see Dave in the room, and we do often do the uh, Sunday from I did a launch pad space and uh, with some of our uh, projects that are launching on the One Planet launch pad. Always excited about that. And I'm particularly excited today, Edwin, because uh, B-Dub and I have become really good friends um, since I joined One Planet. Uh, I didn't know we had so much in common uh, he taught in China for a number of years. And, of course, I've been in China as a teacher. Uh, his wife is Chinese. My wife is Chinese as well. Uh, we both like sports. We've both coached before. And um, we also like fantasy sports. He's got this incredible, like, huge fantasy basketball, like, international platform. And so, yeah, we've just really connected. And I love his project. Uh, you mentioned Edwin about, and, and I, I'm taking too much time. Anyway, I'm just excited about this space, Edwin. And I, uh, Arlene is incredible. She's one of those incredible women of Web3 we just talked about in a in a post yesterday. And so, yeah, and, and Straylight, I've, man, he and I have connected. Uh, he's in the space, and I see uh, the Matic Grazer here, and, and I see Gore from uh, Little Bits. We've connected this week. So, yeah, I'm excited about this space, Edwin. It's going to be massive. It's going to be epic. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, the times that I've, I've had meetings and, and chatted up with B-Dub, yeah, I mean, it, there's so much depth into everything that he does. Uh, and hearing him talk about like stories and sci-fi and I'm sure with sports as well. So uh, it's always nice to have those conver conversations with B-Dub. And I, I think you guys switched, right? I think B-Dub is now with Cypher Wars and Arlene is up with her own account. Yep, that's right. I'm here. Sorry about the the, uh, the mix up. No, no worries. It's all good. How are you doing today, B Dub? Yeah, doing well. Um, woke up to a flurry of activity in our server. Um, we had a we had a, uh, a a promo with Utes um, that kicked off last night. So we've had a a lot of new joins um, into our community. And then we also put out the Cypher Wars treasure hunt um, last night. We've got a wallet with uh, over 500 US dollars in prizes. Uh, and we put onto Twitter and into our Discord a, uh, an image where there's 12 clues, each representing one word from a seed phrase. Um, and, yeah, that's also um, generated a lot of excitement. So uh, it's been wonderful to wake up to, you know, more messages than you can read quickly. All right, just added that to the banner on the top here, what you were discussing there with the um, the secret. So, so people are going to have to decipher some things here, right, to get the seed freeze. That's the, that's the game that you're playing here to get the, to crack the code. Yeah, that's correct. Our artist um, spent quite a bit of time um, drawing up a, a rendition of Cipher City. And then within uh, the rendition, within the image itself, there's there's 12 clues that are hidden around uh, the place. Um, they've all got markers, and then they're quite cryptic. So um, we actually called it Decipher City because that's what you're doing, deciphering the, the various codes and ciphers that we've got hidden in there. And then, yeah, the first one to crack it's going to get um, going to get a fat wallet. Awesome. Yeah, it's always fun to engage the community with these type of events, right? Uh, Arlene, what's going on? How are you doing today? I'm sorry about what I heard about your wallet earlier. Yeah, I got hacked. I made a silly mistake. Um, it's what can you do? Hey, it's uh, it's life. It's life. Sometimes you miss something and you don't realize. And yeah, rough. Um, I'll bring it back to some to lighter matters though. I saw Ghost 
do a laughing emoji when we were talking about the treasure hunt and um you know i did borrow that idea from something that rex wolf did uh sort of several months ago now so i think a ghost remembered that and uh that was a good time was had by all there you know so uh <laughs> um and you know i i thought that no one's been doing it uh for a while and uh you know i think uh this uh, the treasure hunt is was so much fun the first time so i think it uh i'm glad it caused a stir yeah i mean when we see things that work then for other projects right then might as well use them and put your own twist to it right because ultimately with this space it's about attention right and just giving the community something to do is important and this is fun right if if we're all into nfts because of art and speculation and you know community right and making friends and all of that having these type of events that make you think a little bit or, or cooperate and work together goes a long way so if it worked for red gang it makes sense that you would try it as well and you're, you're part of Red Gang as well, so you kind of knew, you know, the effect that that had on your community there. Absolutely. And I, I like to think that we wore it with our own flair as well because Cypher with a C and Cypher with an S, cute little pun going on there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's where the name came from it as well. <laughs> Actually, where did the name Cypher come from, b I don't know. Uh, mm, that's an interesting story, um, but a short one. Uh, when I first joined um, Web3 communities, I had, uh, I had a, uh, a Twitter, um, a personal one that I was using, um, you know, mostly to follow kind of political accounts and news and stuff like that. I might comment from time to time, but it became pretty clear to me immediately um, that to participate in all of the, you know, the Web3 fun on Twitter um, it was going to be awkward using the same account for, uh, you know, both um, sets of activities because not a lot of crossover between those two worlds. Um, so, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to uh, – uh, I'm, I'm always doing iterations on, on B-Dub um, for, for my different usernames, um, and uh, obviously B-Dub was taken on Twitter. Um, so I wanted something crypto-related, and um, crypto-dub seemed too obvious and common. Um, so I went, uh, you know, I was looking around and I thought, okay, Cypher dub, um, you know, and Cypher is, you know, uh, Cyphers are what really drives crypto. It's the, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, I, I guess, I guess the, they, we use a, the, the word escapes me now, but essentially, um, you know, you're just like crypto is all powered by coding. Um, and uh, what you're doing, uh, you know, like even when you've got a wallet um, and you're putting in a seed phrase, you're, you're deciphering um, something. So, yeah, just long story short, uh, went with Cypher Dub, and uh, also that was uh, a pretty common username, so I just changed the spelling on it. So um, my, my Twitter personality became Cypher Dub, um, and then, yeah, that led to Cypher Wars ultimately when we, um, when we started thinking about doing our own project. Thank you for sharing that, B Dub, and, and this is this is what I mean, you know, that you 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 think of uh, a lot when you're creating something, right? The intention uh, when you put something forward, uh, you put a lot of thought into it. So so just something like this, right? There, there's so much that you were putting together from different angles to come up with it. Uh, so thanks for sharing that, Ghost. I want to check in with you, man. How are you doing today? Hey man, doing well, enjoying the nice weather for now, and uh, paying attention to the Polygon Citizens Mint that keeps going on. Yeah, definitely, man. That's been exciting for us, right, from many different angles as well, right? First is the first paid project that's going through our launch pad. We, we've had two in the past, the uh, random box for Derby Stars and then the random box for the nerdy moody collection but ps labs with the polygon citizens first one that's paid and you know the the team seems very happy with the way things are going the community in their discord is happy with the the art having fun you know building their collection 
their individual collections and uh, i'm part of the toads gang which i'm super excited about because i got a, a really dope looking one uh hey so you're with me with a toad let's gang. go yeah <laughs> uh yeah man i i love the the um the art for sure and a lot of people have been giving that feedback too right um so um ps labs david did uh spend a lot of time working on the art again because there were some that weren't uh, the the way that he meant them to be the the quality quality that he meant them to be so so they will be updated uh, so that's something that he'll talk about later on as well with his own community um but yeah man so we're definitely excited to see more volume and then nerdy moody yesterday or earlier today also started their reveal right so they had their free mint for the their own kind of random box and then they started their reveal process um and so so that's a, another collection that just got added to the platform as well one interesting thing that happened there is uh the nerdy moody random box was five, a 500 supply it was around 50 55 uh, floor price and then as soon as the reveal started the floor price is up to about 80 now right so that mechanism of burning the random box to reveal your pfp obviously we can see that arb opportunity there for anybody that was trading those random boxes yeah i'll speak more to that in a bit <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> cool man yeah i'm not gonna steal your thunder here uh but so the main topic today you know that i wanted to see if there's more you know discussions that we can come up with here is around trading cards and how you know web3 projects are creating just the, their own ecosystem within that right so we have cypher wars as a guest here who, who can share a little bit about their thought process behind making their trading card game you know uh, with nfts right it's not something that is obviously necessary web2 companies have done that uh, but now with Web3, you know, I'm curious to learn more about what the uh, benefits are from that. So, yeah, b go ahead. Yeah, happy to pick this one up, uh, mate. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, my personal love of, um, you know, trading cards really started a long time ago. Um, you, actually, you could probably say around the time that um, before any of us probably had an internet connection. Um, I remember getting my first packet of basketball cards um, in grade three uh, when I was around eight years old. And um, I opened up the pack and I pulled out an Alonzo Morning rookie card. So at the time, I, you know, it was the first pack of cards I ever got. I, I didn't know that it was a rare card or whatever. Um, but uh, I do believe someone at the school told me pretty quickly and gave me a plastic sleeve for it. So I popped it straight in there and um, it's actually been there ever since and I've still got it in my drawer, you know, uh, less than a metre away from me right now. I never, I never kind of, uh, I never moved on from it or sold it or whatever, but it was a very meaningful item to me growing up. It made me start barracking for the, or, you know, or rooting for the Charlotte Hornets um, because that's, that's where Alonzo Morning got drafted. Um, but anyway, the, I just always will remember the thrill of kind of that first pack opening um, of getting something rare that everybody else coveted. Um, and then, you know, with um, s subsequent packs that I bought, which there was, you know, thousands, you know, every time my parents or my, my grandparents, you know, offered me a, you know, a, a treat or a prize for doing something good, you know, it was always basketball cards that I wanted. Um, and, yeah, that kind of feeling never got old, that kind of thrill um, and what have you. But um, in addition to that, um, you know, like uh, going through that journey, uh, and particularly when it comes to, to cards, like there were often um, challenges um, that were associated with um, the cards themselves rather than them just being a, you know, a set of items, some of them more scarce than others. Um, you know, you always had challenges like, uh, you know, you wanted to complete the set. Um, you wanted to have all the different um, iterations um, of that particular set of cards. Um, there's something innate in, uh, in humans um, that kind of uh, leads us or, you know, even subconsciously towards wanting to have full sets of things, having things complete. And it probably goes all the way back to when we were cavemen, um, to be honest. 
um, you know, and, uh, you know, back, back then you, you always needed to have a little bit of salt and you needed to have a flint so that you could start a fire and you needed to have wood so that, you know, you could be warm at night. Um, you needed to have food, um, dried food and stuff just in case you couldn't catch something. So there's something deeply ingrained in the human psyche about, um, you know, collecting sets of things. Um, and that also personified in other, you know, areas. So whether it was, you know, trying to, um, you know, collect, sets of, um, you know, awards at school or whether it was things that were on the back of the, you know, the cereal box where, you know, you could collect, uh, you know, cut out the different um, I know, you know, iterations uh, of uh, some kind of graphic that comes on the back of the cereal box and then post them in to the, to the company and get some kind of prize posted back. So um, I guess that's where my fascination with cards and collectibles and that kind of thing started. Um, but to be honest, you know, I got older, I finished high school, as uh, Matic Man was talking about before I, I moved to China, and that kind of put a hard um, break on me, you know, being fascinated with and collecting um, cards. It was actually before that I did another overseas trip when I was in high school, and that kind of, <clears throat> I moved to South Africa, and uh, basketball's not really a thing over there, so I, I, I kind of switched on to cricket and, and different things when I was there, but um, I guess the, the, the story there is that there was a break, uh, a break of, uh, I don't know, five or ten, year, 10 years or 15 years. And then, um, you know, I found my way into NFTs um, by a kind of a different route, um, which was, uh, you know, I was browsing some basketball stuff on Twitter and um, uh, funnily enough, a, a trading card um, with a robot on it that really grabbed my attention and led me down a rabbit hole into a Telegram group um, where there was a, you know, an NFT outfit called uh, uh, Crypto Rider at the time. Some of you may know them as Meta Collect now. Um, you know, they uh, had been putting out a couple of sample trading cards for a project called Crypto Finny. And uh, to me, it was just fascinating. As a big fan of sci-fi, I wanted to know everything about um, this robot that I could see um, in, in the image and where he was and what he was doing and, um, you know, is there a story behind it and that kind of thing. So I kind of, yeah, I fell into um, crypto and started discovering NFTs and that's when my kind of like passion for, for cards and collecting, it really kind of met sci-fi um, head on and also I guess another, you know, passion of mine which is like technology. So uh, it was like, you know, a confluence of all these things that I really liked um, and that was actually on the Wax blockchain. So I started acclimatizing with the Wax blockchain. And on the Wax, um, trading cards are really kind of one of the key types of NFTs that are traded on Wax. Um, there's all sorts of different types of sets. Um, and there's all sorts of utility that can be bought in much more easily in the digital um, landscape versus in real life. So, you know, like uh, with basketball cards, physical cards, you have to go to the shop to buy them. Um, then you you know like you if you want to sell them you have to go back to a shop or you have to put them up on the internet it's uh, go to a swap meet or something it's like a multi multi step process and you know if you wanted to get a reward or sending in pack like empty packs or whatever again you know down to the post office sending stuff off waiting for it to come back in the mail but all of that kind of stuff was uh, essentially instant on um, Web three which just made the whole process much more I guess faster more exhilarating, more fun. Um, and uh, I quickly learned that, you know, just collecting sets and getting rewards it was by no means, it wasn't even scratching the surface of what could be done on Web3 versus in real life. So, um, you know, when you start thinking about like um, having burn events or trading events where, you know, you can collect, say, 10 commons, trade those in for, um, you know, uh, like a rarer card, uh, you know, staking where you can accumulate a bunch of cards that you might not ordinarily um, have a use for or some of your doubles, and then you can stake them um, to receive um, rewards, which can be cashed in for other things. Um, the possibilities were just kind of absolutely endless, um, not to mention using NFTs um, as part of uh, kind of broader, uh, you know, gaming mechanics. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I think that kind of... Um, give some context as to why we decided as Cypher was to go down the trading card route. Uh, it really, the genesis of it was, you know, a love of that style of collecting since we, you know, since I was a little kid, um, you know, fascination and love of uh, sci-fi, 
um, love of um, Crypto Web 3. And then I think probably most importantly is just seeing the absolute success of that format on Wax where, um, you know, I made a pack for Cypher Wars back when we first started talking, which was quite a while ago now. But um, the top 10 trading card projects on Wax uh, had done 1 billion, 1 billion US dollars in turnover. In, uh, so that's, you know, just cards sold and traded um, over the 10-month period before around February last year. So um, that obviously would have um, ballooned since then, um, but it's a huge uh, market opportunity. And when I look around at, you know, blockchains like Polygon uh, and at the time Terra um, and, and also, you know, others that are looked into, such as Solana, you don't really see uh, the trading card movement or the trading card NFT movement in uh, full effect. Uh, but I have absolutely no doubt um, that, that it's coming to all of those spaces. And, you know, we saw an opportunity to lead the way um, and we grabbed it. Yeah, all good points for sure. And I agree with you. I think in general, we all have this want and need to like start something and finish it, right? And I think even just collecting a, a full range of, cards as you're saying like even in sports right having the full starting lineup and then here with your game just uh, you're gonna have 25 different ones that are going to be part of the first series so so that's interesting to explore uh let's get to some of these hands real quick punky killer what's going on hey yo guys i have a quick question yeah go ahead um is one plan planning to be a multi-chain marketplace in the future yeah, definitely. Uh, that's that's the vision that we feel in general most projects would like to have, right? That they're able to engage with as many people as possible. So uh, that is something that we want to as well. But for now, Polygon is our home and this is where we're going to continue to build our community and support the creators that are here. But ultimately, yeah, that, that our goal is to be in more chains. Yes, I got it. Yeah, thank you for that question. Arlene, what's going on? Hey, I was uh, I was going to build on sort of our wider theme there and touch on some of the things that uh, Beta mentioned. Um, so if if we want to talk about sort of why we why humans are fascinated by collectibles, it's uh, you know, if you, even if you just look at the, the history of money, it's uh, really fascinating. If you think about all of the wonderful things that we've used as money in the past, uh, shells, rocks, shiny things, and uh, shiny things, I, I, by the way, I've got a science degree, so uh, might as well come in handy, am I right? Um, uh, shiny things, uh, I've read somewhere that uh, that uh, they they fascinate us specifically uh, because it it looks like uh, the water uh, or, or sunlight shining on water and so that sort of hijacks our our rational thinking processes. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> um, and also, uh, you know, if we were to talk about the limitations of uh, you know, trading cards, IRL, this also harks back to, you know, good old fashioned uh, Ethereum history, the, the, one, of the, one of the founding principles of Vitalik Buterin, or the, one of the stories that he says, is that he, uh, you know, uh, he played uh, World of Warcraft and he cried because Bethesda, is it Bethesda Blizzard, Blizz, Blizzard uh, took something away from him in his World of Warcraft account and he cried because he was very attached to it. Um, so, you know, in a sense, trading cards really, really resonate. The reason why we're, we're uh, trading cards is such a good use case for NFTs is because it resonates with some of the founding principles of cryptocurrencies to begin with as well. So evolution, evolution and Metallic Buterin, I'm in, eh? Yeah, that that's interesting, right? The ownership component as well. I mean, attaching that to what Ida was saying about just reducing the friction of having to go to places to sell things or buy things, doing it, you know, from your computer with one click of a button, right? Like that changes so much into trading cards for sure. What's going on, Matic Man? Hey, Edwin, hey, man, I wanted to address three people that have just spoken. First of all, Arlene, thank you for your comments. I'm from a family of collectors. I've lived away from home since I got out of college, and it seems like every year when I go back home for Christmas, 
my mom has started a new collection. Uh, one year it was like something called like Cherish Teddies, like this little bear collection. The next year she was collecting cows. The next year it was like angels. And it, recently it's like this Christmas village and she'll try to get like every one in the collection. And when you finally get them all, you move on to something else. So and I'm a, being from a family of collectors, I guess it's in my genes, it's in my DNA. So I, I was a huge sports card collector, something else beat up and I had in common. In fact, when I was in college, my last two years of college, my job was at a sports card shop. So I really enjoyed that. I had a huge baseball card collection, basketball cards, and football. I'm a Cincinnati Reds fan. My goal was top sports cards started in 1952. I was trying to get every Cincinnati Reds card that Topps had ever put out. So, and I was well on my way until anyway. So, I love collecting. So, Arlene, I love what you said. I, I do think there's something in our DNA about wanting to collect. And Punky Killer, good question. Uh, Punky Killer is one of the Matic men. We have, uh, I started this thing uh, last week. We have five young men that I'm trying to mentor. I call them the Matic men. And for six weeks, they're going to be uh, trying to be in spaces. They're going to be working in our Discord. And at the end of six weeks, we're going to bring one of the Matic men onto our team. So Punky, I'm really proud of him. He's only actually 13 years old, and he's not afraid of anything. He got up in the space with that Sandeep was in uh, about 10 days ago and spoke. So, yeah, good job, Punky. But make sure you keep the questions like, on target, okay, buddy. But good job. And beat up. Last question, last comment. Beat up. Something else we have in common. In all my years in Asia, he's the only other Charlotte Hornets fan I've met. I'm from North Carolina. I'm a Hornets fan. He's the only other Hornets fan in all of Asia besides me. So we have to stick together. And question for you, beat up. Can I have that Alonzo Morning rookie card? I want that man. Ha ha ha. Yeah, well, um, I, that was uh, something that I didn't realize we had in common was that affinity for the Charlotte Hornets. Um, in terms of the Alonzo Morning rookie card, um, yeah, get me your address and I'll send it off to a good home. Um, I did actually want to add something about Cypher Wars, though, um, that I neglected to mention before. Um, and that is that, you know, whilst we're in a trading card format, I think that there's another very... Uh, you know, a valuable um, innovation that we're bringing to, you know, the crypto and NFT space. And that is a new way to, you know, do storytelling. So, um, you know, obviously for the longest time, stories were told verbally, um, passed down from generation to generation. Um, then, you know, we, uh, you, there was writing that was discovered. Um, people could write stuff down by hand on books. Um, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, we had the printing press, and now we've had another revolution in, uh, oh, sorry, I, I, I missed one uh, important uh, milestone there. We had, you know, the advent of film and TV photography. Um, but, you know, the, the internet and particularly crypto and NFTs has introduced another paradigm shift in what's possible with storytelling. Um, and Cypher was, you know, whilst it is in the format of trading cards, we're not really restricted um, by geometry like we are in the real world. So in the real world, You've got uh, a card, it's physical, it's got a front and a back, and that's your restrictions. You, that's all the content that you can put on there. Uh, but because our assets are digital um, and because um, we've been working with such great partners in One Planet, we're actually introducing uh, what we're calling multi-dimensional NFTs um, to, to Polygon, which is trading cards but with a front uh, and then several backing cards. Um, because we're not restricted by you know, physicality, um, you know, we, we don't have to just have a front and a back. So we've got a front, we've got a, 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 and in three backing cards in most cases. So on the backing cards, we have um, a, a character description, which tells you a little bit about the character on the front of the card. And then we also have an excerpt from the Cypher Wars narrative, which is basically our story, our, our law, our book. Um, we've written it kind of as if it was a novel. And you get chunks of that on the back of the cards as well. So um, not only is it, a, you know, a, you know, hitting that trading card genre, it's also, you know, um, the, you know, ideal for people who, you know, who like, who like stories, who like media, who like kind of fiction, because, um, you know, that's kind of a key pillar of our, um, of our project. Aside from the, from the art, it's also the the writing and the storytelling. So 
what we really um, think that we're ushering in is a, an absolutely 100% new way of telling stories with, uh, with NFTs. So really looking forward to seeing how that resonates through the broader ecosystem because we think, uh, we think that's going to take off as a format and we're already seeing other projects pop up with similar ideas. So it's really exciting. That's such a good point uh, you make there. The first time I saw something that made me think about your like multi-dimensional concept was with Top Shots, right? And having like a cube and each side of that cube having its own different um, kind of design, right? Like one being a 10 second clip of a basketball play, the other side being just a still, the other side being the rarity. So that was interesting to to see. Um, let's go with uh, Sean. Is that you on Nights and Peasants? Hey, guys. Uh, first of all, Punky Killer, I just wanted to say you are so impressive, bro. Like, it took me a long time to gain the courage and confidence to talk in a space. So at 13 year, years old, you're just killing it. Um, second, uh, something that Arlene said triggered a little idea in my head. But first of all, Arlene, your excitement it's just like so contagious and you're so cute. I swear to God. Anyway. <laughs> um, so when you mentioned the wow cards, that's something that I collected a long time ago for all the pets and mounts and things. And um, that's something that you guys can use so easily with what you've got is add little Easter eggs in your cards to, um, to showcase like collaborations so a specific easter egg could also be an nft into somebody else's game and, and um you know like essentially the pet idea but through collaborations with other web3 projects it'd be so easy to implement and you've just got like the, the world's your oyster in that respect so and no, i just think it's really cool that trading cards has that have this aspect i mean sure most nfts could do this sort of thing but with the trading card, you've got like the storytelling and everything else involved with it. And I just think it's really cool. And I think that part of the volume that Vida mentioned on Wax comes from all of that, right? That there are so many different angles that you can explore with a trading card concept, right? Uh, like just being able to collect, uh, right? And and putting everything together and then the different levels, like with Cypher Wars, um, you know, the hollows that are going to exist and that just having all of those, then having the lesser rarity uh, that does, that's not a hollow, right? But it, it just adds a level of gamification that makes people want to trade and collect. Um, so it's, just, it's a different category, right? Completely different than a PFP uh, category, for example. Yeah. Yeah, and, and um, like opening a pack of cards and expecting NFTs from that project, but then finding an NFT, like it has additional utility and additional depth to another project as well, like as a surprise, it'd be so cool. It'd be so exciting. I'd open up so many packs of cards to do that. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I want to check in with Ghost. Like that gacha aspect. What was that? Sorry. Oh, just the, the gacha aspect to it, we, like so many levels of gacha. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, good point, good point. Um, go ahead, Arlene. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm hearing, you know, some of the ideas that are firing off in the background uh, of my head is that, like, you could we, – we, we do have Easter eggs. Uh, I think B-Dub could speak to those extensively. But, uh, for example, on our Slap Drone uh, card, we have a One Planet logo very prominently displayed. Uh, shout out to you guys. Um, so uh, there's actually a few other sneaky ones in there. There's a trippy wolf in there. There's a, there's a baby bull in there somewhere, just, like, buried on one of the signs in the background. So we have loads of Easter eggs. But what I'm hearing is that you could have, uh, you know, a background character in the card and launch your own collection off that or, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, have an extra thing that has an extra utility, maybe maybe characters from different projects 
and have that as a spy or, a, you know, some other shady organization in the background that's part of the story. I'm just riffing here because I don't know what kind of plans B-Dub has for the story here. But um, I am seeing a lot of potential uh, to to sort of that that line of thinking that Shan just proposed. So that's that's brilliant. I could probably wax poetical on that a little bit further. Um, so first up, I can say there's so many Easter eggs hidden in our cards that I don't even think I can remember them all um, because literally every card has, you know, dozens of them. Um, it uh, Kind of to your point, Shan, and what you were talking about, Arlene, uh, you know, with the multidimensional aspect of the cards, that really starts... Um, uh, you know, even before you start introducing additional assets to the NFT. Um, so if you think about a PFP, there's only so much that you can do because you've got, um, you know, you've got a usually a face, you know, they can have a hat, they could have, you know, tattoos, all the normal tropes that we're all very used to. So people have got very, very creative, uh, you know, in terms of creating unique PFPs and unique assets within that context. But there is a limitation to it. You know, there's only a certain amount of dimensions to each card, like a certain amount of traits that you can, um, you know, make different to others. Um, but then when you start to introduce other elements to the card, so whether it be a background, um, you know, you can amplify how many different traits, um, you know, your, your assets can contain. Um, but then when you start to, um, you know, take that even further, you can start to make the backgrounds more complex. You can start to um, show the full character rather than, you know, just the just the face um, or just the side on profile view. Um, you know, you can start to um, implement all sorts of different, you know, your opportunities to provide unique um, assets really, um, you know, uh, exponentially increase as you add more dimension. So obviously we've gone a lot further um, you know, we've we've obviously we've got character in each card, but then there's a complex background. Then you add in the writing that kind of gives it a, a whole other kind of um, set of avenues that you can go down in terms of collaborating, adding in Easter eggs and that kind of thing. Um, and then even on the gaming and the utility side of things, um, you know, that that same principle applies. So, you know, we've got a kind of a game on the back end of Cypher Wars where people can um you know, bet their cards in different activities and their cards can be upgraded and downgraded to, to more or less rare um, assets as a result of the, you know, of, of the outcomes of those games. Um, but there's absolutely nothing stopping us partnering with, you know, other collections, allowing them to um, add the ranking system onto the back of their cards, allowing those cards to be, in, you know, incorporated into the game. Um, once it's all set up, it'll be a relatively simple thing. So, um, you know, the, 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 the opportunities to kind of take things in so many different directions really, really open up the more complex you make um, the NFTs themselves. So, you know, we just went through a, you know, a, a bull market where it was really a very two-dimensional NFT bull market, mostly JPEGs um, and, and mostly quite simple executions. But when we get to this next bull run or even what's being built now, you see the complexity in what people are doing, um, you know, really kind of shining through. And it's often in these, you know, lull periods, you know, these bear markets when, the, you know, the people don't have that quick and easy win on the table. They really have to be innovative to, you know, make a splash um, for, you know, for other projects, for collectors, for uh, investors to notice them. And uh, it's often in those types of environments that you really see, uh, you know, innovation um which will kind of set the table for what's to come in the next bull yeah that's such a good point I, and i think in general investors too right they are looking for more sophisticated projects to put their money in because they realize that just speculating on digital assets without depth it, it's risky it's very risky right but at least with a project like yours that you're building a whole immersive world around it and there's some gamification that you can actually use each one and there's potential to compete against others. Just that alone, right? It adds more discussion opportunities. Uh, it, it allows them to think about a strategy and, and just get involved more, more with their assets, right? 
Um, I do want to just uh, check in with our listeners here. We're almost at an hour. Man, I think this is the fastest Twitter space uh, that I've felt so far. Um, but if there's any listeners that have any questions for Cypher Wars, for Eileen, for Knights and Peasants, please request and come on up while we have them up here uh, for you guys. Um, Ghost, I want to check in with you. First, I'm curious about your thoughts around what we've been talking about here. And then also if you can share with us some of the updates in the One Planet Marketplace that, you, that you've that you done, some of the research that you've done there. All right. Concerning trading cards and especially multi-dimensional trading cards, that's going to be groundbreaking in my perception. You know, just having a front-facing card that we've seen before, it's fine. It's cool. It's like what Beatup said. It is just uh, a JPEG. Not to downplay it, but pushing the envelope further and adding more complexities to it, adding more facets to the same uh, asset, that's something to look at. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like a... It's, sorry, mate. Um, I was just going to say, it's kind of like uh, an exponential equation. Every time you add a different element, it gives you, you know, um, you know dozens more roads that you can go down so um you know when you add one element you know maybe that's another 12 things you can explore when you add 10 elements you're kind of going 12 to the power of 10 really because you can just keep going down different rabbit holes and um you know exploring new spaces and being creative in different ways so that's you know certainly has been probably the the i guess the most enjoyable aspect of um, building out this project over the last year is there's just so many different things we could do, um, you know, and we haven't been able to do them all. But uh, I guess one of the blessings, uh, this, you know, the silver linings of, of the of the Terra crash was that it did give us more time to improve um, this Genesis set of Cypher Wars. Um, and we were able to add things like um, card narration. So we got one of our community members who's a, you know, he's a, actually a famous opera singer. He actually um, read out and recorded all... 25 cards um, which we've now incorporated onto the rare versions of our of our assets so um, you know when you're pulling cards out of the pack you know every every couple of packs you're going to get one that's fully fully narrated in very professional manner um, which you know for me as a big audiobook fan uh, was just a, a you know a really unex, uh, unexpected but super exciting um, quality that we could um, you know add to our set Yeah, thank you for adding to that, B-Dub. Um, Ghost, do you, do you want to go through your research real quick? Yeah, let, let me spin this off so we can have some time for some questions. Uh, last week, week three, we have W Stars with a 7.9% increase in floor price. Uh, Hellcat still remain number one in volume-wise. We'll see about uh, week four what it looks like. Uh, they do have their mint coming up on the 20th. Uh, the two new mints, uh, Nerdy Moody last week, and then we have Polygon Citizens uh, in third. Uh, then we have Hellhounds and Derby Stars uh, ringing out the fifth spot. Uh, Polygon Citizens by PS Live is still ongoing. So if you haven't picked up your own Polygon Citizen, please do so. Uh, higher sales for last week. We have a Hellcat 1541 for one thousand nine hundred ninety four dollars. That's the top one for last week. Hellhound 4923 for eight hundred, and we have Gumlo from PS Labs uh, Polygon Citizens for three seventy three. Uh, we have seen a drawdown in volume with the Legacy, and we'll call them Legacy collections that have been around for a while. Uh, Drawn down right after the post Utes news for the move to Polygon, but next week we'll see what everything looks like after these mints. Awesome, thank you for that, Ghost. Yeah, it's definitely been exciting to see more liquidity come into the platform, and a lot of projects have more activity, right? Uh, with uh, their communities growing, with more of the Solana and Polygon people coming in and asking questions so so definitely good time starting here for the new year so we have a few members 
coming up here to speak. Just want to check in. We had Polygon Cal uh, come up. Do you have any questions or comments? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I just wanted to comment on the collectibles thing for like um, one minute. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. So first of all, thank you very much. Hold on, I, I wrote this down. Um, thank you very much for like being here. Uh, it's really such an amazing community. A lot of NFT communities, I don't know, they're not really focused on spreading education and whatnot, but it's cool to see you guys just kind of like, you know, just spreading interesting things. But what I want to talk about was, I feel like the future of NFTs is just going to be like general community based where like you just have, and I want to hear your thoughts on this, like general community based where you just have like a general community of people doing all different things, but they're all together under one picture. Then there'll be like, for example, specific ones like fitness NFTs where like everyone in that NFT is per, like a fitness person, for example, maybe finance. But I want to get onto the topic of collectibles. I feel like right now, there are not many NFTs that are necessarily collectibles, right? Uh, when I was creating this collection, I was looking into Solana Monkey business, and I felt like it was really interesting to bring up like what made Solana Monkey business unique was the fact that people liked it as a collectible, it, it, just the art and everything. You know, a lot of NFTs, I feel like they try to act more like an investment. They want to pitch like they're going to go up, that they have utility. But I feel like the future of NFTs, and I want to hear you guys' thoughts on this, is going to be focused on just the art and owning it and being like this is what it is i feel like nfts are going to be pushing away from multiple thousands and having smaller supplies a few hundred um and then having more traits you know i feel like most nfts are just a few hundred traits and then a large supply just to put something out but it's and they a lot of them are just copy and paste it's really going to be interesting to see new collections come and like create new art forms that we've never seen before. Well, so I just want to talk about that, and I'm, uh, we're really excited to launch on Polygon. And thank you again, One Plan, for creating this opportunity. Collections like us wouldn't be possible without you, because you guys took the risk, and it's pretty much paying off. Thanks for everyone in the space, and really wish you good luck. Thanks for bringing up the topic of collectibles. I think it's a really good one. It's gonna be nice when we see that like 80, 90 percent of NFTs that are kind of slow rugs right now go away. And it's going to be more focused on good communities. Um, thank you again. Damn, that that was so well said, man. Thank you for coming up here and and spreading that knowledge. <laughs> uh, but I I think to your point, we're still so early in NFTs, right? And I think there's so much innovation that still needs to happen. And we're just in the first round, let's say. You know, people have. Um, Many people have not really explored what NFT tech can be. And I think to your point, there, there needs to be a lot more trades. There needs to be like who chose 10K as like the norm and the default, right? That is just a number. But um, ultimately, there's so, so much more that NFT, NFT tech allows for. And so uh, as we get more creators like b here, you know, and trying different things out, having different backs for trading cards, you know, that's something that's unique. So, so I'm in agreement with you there. I uh, just want to check the hands here, Astro. Uh, what's going on with you, sir, Astro Wolf? Hey, hello, everyone. I'm very happy uh, to be here with you guys and be listening and, you know, so many amazing things. And, uh, you know, I'm very excited for the Mint, the upcoming Mint for uh, my friends of Cypher Wars. And I'm very excited. I believe it's a very a clever um, and interesting um, uh, NFT project, you know, we, you know, you can see the lore, you know, and, uh, also that is a trader car, a trading car game is, is amazing. You know, I remember also when I was, a uh, you know, a little bit younger, <laughs> I don't want to spoil <laughs> my, my age here, <laughs> but, um, when I was younger, I, I remember people play, playing some car games, so Star Wars car games, uh, versus, which is a Marvel versus DC car game that was very popular up here. Um, and I believe that, you know, once the people saw the NFTs and saw the, the, the game, you know, I, I really believe that it will be a hit. You know, people uh, can really relate to that. Uh, people that grow with that, I believe is, is awesome. You know, so kudos to my friends of Cypher Wars. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, big shout out to my fellow wolves there that are here also in the MA. 
Yeah, thank you for those thoughts, Astro Wolf. Um, I want to check in with Mr. ER Matic, Matic Addict. Did you have a comment or question? Yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. I had uh, I had two questions. Uh, the first is, are there only 444 NFTs in this collection, or are there just 444 different possible cards? And the other one is, uh, are you guys going to de develop some sort of platform to actually trade the card safely between people? That's for B-Dub. I can, thanks, Matt. I can, uh, I can pick that one up. Um, so, yeah, um, great questions. Um, I think I'm going to have to um, put out a, a tweet um, thread and uh, an announcement in the Discord to explain the uh, the supply in a little bit more detail, but I can do it now. So there's 444 sets and there's 24 cards um, in each set. So um, there's 400 sets of commons, there's 40 sets of rares, and then there's four sets of hollows. So each card comes in a different, um, in three different rarity tiers, the, the, the common, the rare, and the hollow. Um, so in the packs themselves, you'll have packs of three and packs of five. So um, probably the most efficient way to collect a set would be to buy five packs of five where you'd have 25 cards um, and then do some trading or some selling and some buying um, to, to, to make sure that you don't have doubles and to round out the set. Then the actual there's actually 25 characters, not 24. You can only get the first 24 characters from the card packs, the 25th character is going to be a set reward. So there will be a deadline set. It's likely going to be, uh, you know, around the 28th of February. Um, and any collector that's able to form a full set will get one of these, the 25th character, which is the Emperor Cypherius, um, the big honcho. Um, you'll get his card um, dropped into your wallet. So um, whilst all the... Uh, all the main cards will have only 444 editions. Um, Cypherius will be much lower. Uh, I really doubt that there'll be 444 um, full sets completed. So if you had, for instance, two sets of commons, you would get airdrop two common Cypheriuses. If you had a set of rares, you would get the rare Cypherius. And then same with the hollows. That's going to be a really tricky one for anyone to pull off. But if someone can accumulate all 24 hollows, they're going to get the, um, the Emperor Cypherius hollow. So that's kind of uh, how that works. But um, that won't be the only um, set reward. Um, it won't be the only collector's challenge. Um, there'll be others that are coming in um, as well. But, yeah, there's um, the way to look at it, I guess, is you've got uh, 400, um, 400 sets, um, 40 sets of rares and uh, – sorry, 400 sets of commons, 40 sets of rares and four sets of – Hollow, so there's only 444 full sets, but in terms of the total assets, um, it's around the 10,000 mark. Oh, and then you had a secondary question there, which was um, in regard to a trading platform. So, yeah, that, that's an actually a really insightful question right there. So, um, trading uh, is definitely something that um, trading cards beget, it's in the name. Um, and 100%, there's going to be horse trading that goes on. And we're going to encourage it to happen in a, in a safe and secure way um, and, and facilitate it in our server. Um, but we are anticipating that there could be, um, you know, some people trying to, uh, you know, make trades with assets that they don't have and things like that. So um, in, in advance, we'll be putting out some, you know, guidelines or uh, advice to people as to, you know, how best, um, you know, to facilitate trading. And if there's any kind of particularly big, uh, deals where there's people that are, are nervous or whatever, one of our team members uh, might be able to facilitate that trade. But ultimately, um, you know, from a, from a trading point of view, there does need to be a platform that, um, you know, on Polygon that facilitates trading of, um, of, of trading card NFTs. Um, I've got no doubt that one's going to happen, whether it's us that builds it um, or, or potentially one planet, um, I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, if you look at the WAX ecosystem and you take a look at Atomic Hub, um, you know, obviously they facilitate drops, mints, um, you know, uh, a lot of the mechanics that I was talking about before, staking, um, you know, blending, that kind of thing. Um, but they really have put a massive focus on making the trading experience 
um, uh, really good. So on Wax, for instance, you can select, say, um, a packet of, or you can make a bundle of four NFTs. You can add, say, 200 Wax coins um, to, the, to the package, and then you could offer that just for one card. Or you could offer that for, you know, a, another bundle from, from another, um, you know, a collector. Um, you get an alert when um, a trade request comes in through your inbox. Um, and then, you know, they have the appropriate safeguards in place, you know, to kind of uh, make sure that there's a, a little kind of mistakes as possible. Because as we all know, you know, once, the, you know, it's a little bit difficult to police uh, transactions on the blockchain. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of permanent once they go through. But, um, you know, we have had a lot of discussions with um, One Planet about, you know, where this is going. Uh, and we think that the success of Cypher Wars and the, the proof will be in the pudding, so to speak. So, you know, when, when, when the need arises for such a, you know, uh, utility, um, I think that's when it will really start to be looked at seriously. So, we, you know, we're looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you for that, Vida. We'll get to the last two comments here and then we'll close it out. Knights and Peasants, go ahead. Hey, so um, we actually built an NFT escrow several months ago before the Harmony Bridge hack. Um, it hasn't been turned on since then because it hasn't really been needed. But uh, it's, it could be something that our dev could put back up again. Sorry, that's my puppy. <laughs> but yeah, we actually already have an NFT escrow that was built for Harmony that the contracts could be adjusted for Polygon. So you can um, put up the the NFT that you want to trade and then somebody can offer you something in return and you can accept or deny it or um, add tokens to that and it costs a tiny little bit of whatever coin. Oh my God, shut up. <laughs> You're giving me the evils now. Um, yeah, it costs a little bit of the token to to put through. But yeah, it's just a safe way for everybody to trade. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch off now. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Sean. Uh, but there you go. Vida. I was going to say, yeah, actually, um, you know, there was a real shortfall on WAX, um, you know, maybe, you know, like early 2019 when it came to trading. Uh, and the, um, the, the people that were doing scams were becoming, you know, very sophisticated in the way that they went about it, um, you know. So, you know, substituting assets out, adding in fake assets that look like the real one, that kind of thing. And then what happened was you not only had Atomic Hub, um, you know, snap into action and start building out. Um, well, actually, no, let me just rewind a bit. You did eventually get Atomic Hub, the, you know, the marketplace, snap into action and build out, a, you know, a reputable trading platform. Um, but that only happened when the community started building out um, alternatives themselves. So there was, you know, several groups um, that sprung up and they kind of, um, at first, were facilitating kind of, um, you know, they had a good reputation and they would facilitate trading, on, like, manually. You know, there'd be an intermediatory uh, and then they'd charge a small fee. And then, obviously, that from there was um, automated um, and kind of injected into the technology. Um, and then it was at that moment when Atomic Hub realised, hey, all of this activity is departing from our platform. Um, you know, it's going, it's going to other places. That's when they really snapped into action and went, wow, like, okay, you know, there's a, you know, there's a money that we can make when uh, items are bought and sold on the marketplace, but we can also charge a very, very small fee, you know, 10 cents per trade, something like that. Um, and that will be profitable as well. So, um, you know, when they saw uh, users using alternate platforms to facilitate things that they wouldn't build, when they realised that there was actually a commercial opportunity there, um, you know, they snapped into action pretty, pretty darn quickly, and um, the result is a you know a beautiful, elegant um, trading platform that they have um, over there now. Yeah, so our NFT escrow um, only the contracts that we add can be traded on it, so there wouldn't be any fakes like switched out or anything like that. Yeah, we we, um, we launched that for pretty much the same reason. There were a lot of people doing particularly. Uh, sophisticated scams on Harmony and a lot of the community were getting hurt. So that's the reason we launched our escrow too. Plus, you know, a little bit extra on the side. It didn't make much, but it did protect the community and that was huge for us. I'm sensing that there's an opportunity to have a discussion after this, uh, this space is shared. 
Let's do it. All right, all right. Uh, Dave, uh, how are you doing today? You got any comments here on the topic? Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. It's really interesting to, to listen to all of this. And um, I, I think my only thought on trading uh, card type stuff, guys, is that I think like sports fans, sports fans are where it's at. Like, and any sports fan collects stuff. Um, and I think that's like where the next lot of mass onboarding into NFTs as collectibles and trading opportunities actually comes from. Um, it doesn't mean you have to have a sports project, um, but I think that's the, that's the market. And I think there's plenty of those people kicking about and seeing lots of different projects push lots of different innovations in, in terms of how this can work, whether that's Cypher Wars, whether that's Friday Night Punks, who you guys are, go, are meeting, um, you know, whether that's other people in and around the space and, and what they're doing and how they're trying to innovate. Um, it's super, super exciting. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to sort of come in and say, think about the sports fans. Think about that as your market if you're a trading card, uh, if that's an outcome for, for you or something that you want to be. And, um, as always, it's uh, always very, very exciting to, to listen to the people that you, you get in here, Edwin and uh, Tiny, and, and then listen to them chat. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for, for that thought there, Dave. Uh, I have heard that so rare they are getting like millions of uh, trading volume just on trading cards right now for the basketball season, right? And they have competitions going on daily and weekly. Um, so, so yeah, I definitely agree with you that looking at ways to to target that demographic. It's important, right? And I mean, ultimately, I feel like we're all here. I mean, us here, we work in the industry in Web3, right? But there are people that have their normal nine to five jobs. And then on the side, they're looking for ways to entertain themselves and have fun, right? And if they can experience uh, a fun uh, environment where they can trade a digital asset, uh, and then they know that there's some kind of intrinsic value to it all the time, I feel like they that's something that will catch their attention and and will create stickiness for them to stick around as well, right? And kind of follow the lore of the projects that are being built around the technology. But man, it, it's been it's been a great uh, session today. It's uh it's uh ten past the hour already, so I think we'll close it off just to let you guys go and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. But we'll definitely catch up again with Cypher Wars this weekend. We'll dive deeper just on their project and learn as much as we can so that you guys are all ready to mint their collection on the 26th. If they're, if you're still looking for some whitelist or ways to get involved, they have their own event going on right now and we have an event going on with them. So definitely participate there. Uh, join their Discord if you have questions. And uh, yeah, th thanks everybody for, for your thoughts and your questions today. I think I, I had a lot of fun today, so thank you all. Yeah, it was nice and it went by super fast. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Hey, Edwin, can I give a shout out? Sila, Coin, Joe and Lars are here. And Andy from Weary Ape Yacht Club is in the house. And of course, you already mentioned David. I love PS Labs and what they're doing. And Polygon Punks is here as well. And B-Dub, man. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be epic, Matt. We're excited for you. Thanks, guys. Uh, all of your support really means a lot to us. Um, we love what's happening um, on Polygon right now. Um, the community is really coming together. Uh, you know, there's there's old faces, there's new faces. Everyone just seems to be pulling in the in the same direction, and uh, you know, it really feels exciting. And we're we're super pumped for, for 2023. Thanks, guys. Awesome. All right, everybody, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll catch you again on the weekend with Cypher Wars, and then next week we'll be back with another episode of The Landing. Take care. Thanks for joining us for The Landing, One Planet's weekly meeting space. Please join us again next week at the same time.